Thank you to Last Ark Tactics Analog for sponsoring this video. More on them after the story. Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with another story, this one aptly titled, I played with a cult leader for reasons that will become very apparent very soon. I am going to say though, during this story things get pretty dark and weird, so if you're more sensitive to subjects like mental illness, I would advise you proceed with caution. I also almost didn't read this whole story all the way through to the end because it got so bad, but there's a good payoff at the end, you don't want to miss it, just trust me on this one. Anyways, without further ado, roll post. So I was in Roll20 buzzing around looking for a game about 3 years ago now. The LFG tool is a coin toss as to whether or not you'll find a great group or a nightmare group. And sometimes you can't tell a nightmare group just from initial impressions. Well, I applied to join a game that was in progress because it sounded like something I could get into. They were playing a module, recently finished it, and decided to homebrew a campaign around its conclusion. After applying, I was DM'd by one of the players. We'll call him Alpha. He sent me Skype information and we had a call, where he interviewed me. It was less an interview than it was setting down some ground rules. Several red flags came up from there. He spent a bit of time explaining that his brother had left the group because he's a little pussy bitch and they needed a replacement. He explained that he, the player, was doing the interview instead of the DM because I'm the only one who does anything anyway. And then explained that one of the conditions for joining the game was that I'd need to be available throughout the week to do other non-campaign related hanging out and gaming with people in the group. A group that hangs out, outside of just games, are better friends, and better friends make for better campaigns. Whatever, at the time I didn't have a job and I was bored shitless, so none of this bothered me at the time. I decided to build an old standby of mine that works for almost any situation, my Barbarian Goliath V. He's a jovial sort and tends to get along well with basically anyone, and makes for a good intro to ingratiate myself with new players. Within two sessions, we had picked up yet another player, and the both of us had become incredibly bored. The main reason for this is because the DM's game was almost entirely centered around Alpha. For the two sessions I had been in, and the one that the other new guy had been in, we were pursuing a story entirely centered around tracking down Alpha's character's lost father, who was some super uber mega mage trapped in the Feywild for some reason. We weren't allowed to explore, we weren't allowed to investigate anything, we were to avoid any and all encounters, we had to just follow Alpha. Most of the RP was Alpha barking orders at us and telling us to follow him, and warning any of us that if we strayed from where he was going, he would leave us lost in the Feywild forever and never glance back. Buddy, we're here to find your dad. You could at least give us some opportunities at fun beyond waiting for you to ask your magic sticks if we're going to make it in the right direction, and ignoring any and all semi-interesting plot hooks. We avoided a clan of trolls, we avoided interacting with a hag, we avoided talking to some fairies, we avoided any and all deviation, and I've avoided any and all fun roleplay and engagement or world building. Yay. I messaged the DM after the second session explaining my concerns and he agreed that Alpha's character was getting a bit too much spotlight, but promised me that after this whole thing is dealt with it won't be like that anymore. I asked how long that would take and he said he had no idea. Great, very reassuring. Well, DM went to Alpha and expressed the concern that I had told him, and Alpha grabbed me on call to basically tell me the same thing, DM did. I expressed that I was dubious that this trend would end anytime soon and I was getting bored. So Alpha came up with the idea of having another person in the group GM instead on Fridays. Oh. So we'll have two games a week now? Okay. DM2 was a timid guy but seemed more or less alright. He had problems dealing with confrontation but had some ideas that he wanted to do. He wanted everyone to feel like they were important in this world and give everyone plenty of spotlight, but also didn't have much of an idea of scope within the first session. Alpha's character directly spoke with his goddess, who then held an elongated conversation with him. Um, okay, why this goddess would want to talk with a level 3 paladin? I don't- Anyway, I'm a higher up in the army, and we're here to rout out some drow that are trying to escape the Underdark to attack us. I have 300 men under me to order. I'm sorry, what? 
Another session passed, I tell DM2 that things are getting a little out of hand and it feels like yet another session where Alpha is the main character. He agrees and promises to tone things back and asks for my forgiveness because he's new at this. I let him know it's alright, just try and chill with direct god conversations about metagame knowledge and maybe make the army Alpha supposedly commands merely a part of a unit that he's part of and they just kinda respect him. DM2 does this and Alpha becomes annoyed that he's only getting yes and no answers from his goddess when he tries to commune with her again. He's also annoyed to find out that his army of men have been relegated to being under someone else's command. By the way, we still haven't found his dad in the other game. We tried doing a quest in the second game, and it went relatively well. Some possessed orcs were terrorizing some townsfolk, and we took care of them. Only to find out that they were being mind controlled by an old dead orc god of war that's influencing orcs all over the world to be rage machines. Nice. Plot. Alpha immediately gets an oversized plus one magic greatsword from the encounter. My rogue has a plus one arrow and a quiver that can hold much more arrows than average. Most of the rest didn't get much. Eh, alright, sometimes loot is in favor of one person more than the others. Luck of the treasure. However, Alpha is still mad. Not at the loot he has, but at my character. See, I made a rogue, and the backstory of said rogue was that he had joined an assassin's guild at a young age that dealt primarily in assassinations that targeted evil people. Still though, my rogue was an assassin, and Alpha argued his paladin, who had a special Super Saiyan transformation, I think it was playtest material, I don't know, would be able to tell that I'm suspicious and probably a killer and wouldn't like me. I don't know why, I was wearing regular scout armor, I was being helpful and I wasn't hurting anyone, I was just helping the group, but whatever. Second DM session keeps going and he decides to make me feel special by having me meet my assassin contact in the town we're staying in late at night. Alpha says he never went to bed and demands to be able to roll perception to see me meeting up with my contact. He rolls. Rolls high. He wakes up the others and comes out to confront me and my contact and demands to know what's going on. We're both dressed normal, there's nothing weird about what's going on outside of my contact having stood next to a tree waiting for me for a while. The contact starts to flee in panic. The group then captures him and forces him to out me and himself as members of an assassin guild. Awesome, cool, sweet, amazing. Alpha and DM1, who is a player in DM's 2 campaign, decided that I was suspicious and demanded I not leave their sight from then on. The others ask me to explain myself and say that it would be unprofessional to explain. They only need to know that I'm no threat to them. So throughout these sessions, here are some other things that have been going on. Alpha has been conscripting me every few days to play random games on Skype with him and at least two other players. I do not know any of these games. He barely explains the rules and then proceeds to win all of the games as everyone just kind of teams up with him to let him win. Alpha has argued with me that all of the things I like to play are stupid actually. Assassin rogues are bad for party dynamics, monks are overpowered, and barbarians are bad for roleplay. He has also argued with me that my method of play is stupid when I am playing my rogue. How, for example, while we're traveling by carriage in dangerous lands, I insist that we travel slower so that I can flank the carriage and keep scouting ahead for trouble. Alpha has informed me that this is stupid and makes the travel take too long and he doesn't want to wait and I should just deal with not being able to do rogue things all the time. DM1 has sided with Alpha in every argument we've had, and in a separate call I pointed out it seemed like all DM1 ever did was just repeat whatever Alpha said without thinking for himself. And Alpha just laughed and said, yeah, I don't even tell him to do that, he just does that, it's great. Outside of Alpha and DM1 being against me in every argument, whether I started or not, everyone else is quiet and passive and don't want to be involved. Alpha is getting the best loot still. DM1's sessions are still about him and his overpowered DMN PC father five sessions in. And I am bored to hell and back. Alpha has decided to start his own game, so that's three a week we're playing now. So he can say, see, I'm not the main character of this one, now you can't complain. And then proceeded to get mad at me for optimizing my fighter and one-shotting his encounters. Now arguing that fighters are overpowered. 
Alpha and DM1 had caused DM2 to cry from how much they criticized his campaign and his lack of skill. DM2 also has fairly severe autism, so it was pretty hard for him to deal with these sort of confrontations effectively. Alpha and DM1 had made our other player cry because they would spend a decent amount of time every day making crude comments towards her about how she could suck their dicks and that she was a whore and a bitch and a cunt. And when she did cry, Alpha would yell at her for taking things too seriously, and then she would apologize for being oversensitive to their, um, jokes. I'm starting to get real tired of this. Alpha spends most of every game, whether he's running or playing, yelling at anyone for doing something he doesn't think they should be doing. And whenever someone else grabs the spotlight for a moment, he insists on jumping in and stealing it back by doing something random and weird. For instance, the party killed off my rogue. Oh yeah, they killed off my rogue because we got to a town and the mayor was being targeted for assassination. They assumed I would be one of them and arrested me. I was sentenced to death because Alpha's paladin demanded it be so, even though I was not guilty, because, well, he's an assassin, regardless, and assassins should be killed. Should've, uh, probably mentioned that a bit. But anyway, after I was forced to kill off my rogue for literally no good goddamn reason, I rerolled a monk because it was DM2's game, and I asked him privately if I could do it. Alpha, who had been arguing with me that monks are overpowered and that he hated them and didn't think anyone should play them, was very upset when I showed up with my new monk. Anyway, my monk was an acrobat with a background in being an entertainer, so of course the party found me at a local inn entertaining a crowd with my acrobatic skills and dancing. I went into great detail as to the flourishes I would use as I would balance myself on my quarterstaff, hop from table to table, have a villager stand and hop on his shoulders, hold one leg up and backflip off of them onto the floor into a split. All sorts of fun things. Alpha, decidedly upset that I was having a moment of spotlight with one of his most hated classes, gets his lawful stupid, the evil must be purged, seven foot tall, angry all the time, no nonsense human paladin, that's been acting for an edgelord for five sessions to join into the dancing and help me perform. And then, afterwards, said, see, I can have fun just like anyone else, I helped you out, I'm a nice guy. I didn't ask. I'm starting to get tired of the three games a week and spending each game being yelled at by Alpha either in character or out of character over nothing, and being forced to play in other games with the group. We invited yet another new player into the group, and new player offered to DM for us since DM2 was getting burnt out with all the fighting. New DM was actually pretty cool. He was a chill dude who had some great campaign ideas. He'd let us play whatever we wanted and had some interesting one-shots we could do to ease the grueling campaigns we already had going. Alpha bragged about how all of his characters are roleplayed extremely well and that he was going to play a Kenku that did nothing but caw for one of the one-shots. Why? Well, to hear him tell it, I have been complimented on the fact that I can put all sorts of emotion and convey whole sentences, thoughts, communicate effectively without ever having to say a word other than the way I say, caw. That's nice, but I have been informed by players with over 20 years of experience that they have never seen someone with the talent I do for conveying complex emotions through nothing more than a simple guttural noise. Yeah, okay, well, one man told me, I have been playing for multiple decades, and I've been in all sorts of campaigns, and never have I seen someone be able to make me cry with their roleplay. And the sheer raw emotion you put in your caw is enough to write several paragraphs explaining the sheer depth of It's Beautiful. The one shot came and went. He played his Kenku. He said caw a lot, like every RP conversation we had. He'd chime in with a caw, whilst also explaining a load of mannerisms that his Kenku would be doing, and then elaborating on what the caw would mean by explaining, looking into his eyes and the way he caws, you're able to tell he means this. I'm all for unconventional roleplay, but a masterful emoter he was not. He just compensated by just out of character explaining what he was going for. I finally decide to give the group one more chance to be fun. DM1 and 2 were still making their games more or less about Alpha's character. 
Alpha had relegated DM1 to a co-DM in his own game and prevented him from being a player so that he could spend more time role-playing his various NPCs and less time worrying about encounters and quests and story. So fuck it, I'm a veteran of DMing myself. I'll make my own game, and I did. I invited everyone to be a part of it, plus a friend of mine who was interested in playing a game if I ran it. I'm a very lenient DM. I let people play what they want from whatever material they want, with my only ask being that if you're gonna play something that's still being playtested, send me the document so I can give it a glance over first. More than likely I'll allow it, I just want to know what I'm getting into. Explaining that my group would be set in the Underdark, where the group will have been accidentally teleported after a magical accident in a tavern they had all been frequenting at the time. Everyone began making their characters. Well, except Alpha. He had voiced his dissent about me running a game since I proposed that I could. His reasons? I don't know if you can be fair running a game. I'll only play if there are no limitations whatsoever and you sound like you're still iffy about untested stuff. I don't want to play with your other friend I haven't vetted. I know nothing about him. This whole premise sounds dumb, I don't think we should even give this a try. In spite of all of his protests, everyone else was enthusiastically on board and so he decided to attend the Session Zero with everyone. He spent most of it being quiet and reserved and just sort of sitting and observing as I helped everyone pick out whatever they wanted to do. DM1 asked if he could run a revised Ranger, which was somewhat new at the time. I told him sure, just send me the PDF of them. He did and I approved it. DM2 asked if he could use a starting feat from expansion material, and after looking over it, I agreed and said it sounded like fun. My other friend, who had not been in the group up to this point, was going to make an artificer which was still new at the time. I told him it was no problem. I would already looked over artificers and, at least in my opinion, it wasn't a particularly overpowered class, though it was incredibly useful in a lot of ways. Alpha didn't ask me for anything. He heard me approve Artificer for my friend and then said, Okay, I see, so we have to send you materials so you can approve it. But he just gets to be what he wants, huh? Okay, yeah, I see where this is going. Not gonna play a game where favorites are picked. And then he left the call. I was annoyed, but honestly, a part of me was glad he wasn't gonna be a part of it. Then tragedy struck. My friend has a rare condition which, once in a very long time, causes him to randomly have seizures. The last time he had a seizure was probably two years prior. And wouldn't you know it, character creation. He asks a question, and then while I'm answering, he has a seizure. Live, on call. I freak out, I don't know what to do. He lived a whole country away from me, and I didn't know his address. I couldn't call the ambulance, I couldn't make sure he was alright, I just sat, deathly silent as I listened and kept hoping that he would be okay. As did everyone else. Thankfully, my friend ended up being okay. He had fell out of his chair and recovered, but had lost memory of everything we had been doing and thought he may have hit his head. We let him know what had happened and he was incredibly embarrassed, leaving the call so he could go to the doctor and make sure he was alright. I was pretty distraught at this time and didn't want to continue doing the session zero at that time. The others told me it was fine and we could try for another day. When Alpha was told about this, he said, well, this is probably a sign or something that you just shouldn't run your game. At this point, I'm done. I'm done with everyone kowtowing to him. I'm done with listening to him be salty about every little thing that doesn't go his way. I'm done arguing with him on a daily basis about his asinine opinions about my playstyle and preferred classes. I'm done with him insisting on making every game about him. I'm done listening to him emotionally abuse the other players. I'm just done. I'm done with being forced to play other games with them for the sake of maintaining a closer relationship or a better campaign. I'm just done. Entirely. I write a strongly worded message in the group chat we all use. I apologize to everyone else and tell Alpha he's a piece of shit. I wish everyone else well, and dearly hope they find someone to play with who doesn't emotionally abuse them and force them to interact with him on a semi-daily basis. Alpha, however, was a manipulative and emotionally draining piece of shit that I wanted nothing more to do with. After leaving, I was messaged by new DM who said he had been observing a lot of the same problems and said he would like to invite me to his group of friends instead. 
Since he liked playing with me, I agreed, and for the next couple of years, I had a lot of fun playing with the new group, who had much better senses of humor, and all in all, were not dominated by any one egomaniacal player. I'm not playing with that group anymore since we've all grown distant for one reason or another, but there's no hard feelings in the latter instance. End post. This was easily the megazord of RPG horror stories. Misogyny, narcissism, DM favor, in and out of game issues, it's got it all. Seriously though, this was emotional abuse and manipulation at its weirdest, and the fact that Alpha was able to keep so many people around for so long is a wonder. It's not in my place to judge, as I'm sure the players had their reasons, but it's still very surprising. Also, to quote a commenter, Alpha 100% definitely has a micro dick. Anyways, that aside, I would like to talk about our latest and greatest sponsor, Last Ark Tactics Analog. Last Ark is a brand new RPG that combines near endless character creativity with JRPG elements to create an RPG experience like none other that I have ever seen. There's a free, playable demo in the description for all of you watching this video, so go check them out and send them the Crab King's regards. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.